HT18 thermal imaging camera. Nicely compact. Has a dust cover over the lenses. This is a visible light camera. And this is the infrared camera. And when you're not using it, keep that closed and it will help keep those clean. On the side is a port and it comes with a cable. You can plug in here, plug it into the USB port on your computer or to a wall charger. It will charge this unit and if the unit is turned on you can retrieve the images that have been stored on the internal memory. This is a key that's used for taking pictures and it has a built-in rechargeable battery. This is my electronic calendar. When we look at it with the thermal imaging camera, the camera actually has two lenses, a visible light camera and an infrared camera. And then we can step-by-step step increase how much of the infrared or thermal image is overlaid on the visible light image. We can turn on a little bit, a little more, a little more, until finally the visible light camera is turned off completely. And then when we turn off the thermal imaging, what remains is the visible image. This can be very handy when you're trying to make a presentation for somebody or explain to them what it is they're looking at in terms of the thermal image. The thermal imaging camera will record whatever image is being displayed on the screen. It does not record video. The file size of the recorded image is relatively small. That's why I'm trying to use my video camera to record what's being done with the thermal camera in real time. Anything that uses power produces heat. This is a small wall receptacle night light that appears to be off at the moment. And the thermal camera will give you a picture of what that looks like. You can turn on the thermal imaging part. And it shows, even though it's off, it is producing heat. So there is some power being consumed. You can also notice around the electrical outlet that there is no heat loss. So the area around that outlet is well insulated and well sealed. This is the hallway in my house and I have radiant heat pipes in the floor. I can see where the hot water is going out into the floor and then the cold water returning. And go around your house, you can look at the door, turn on the thermal image we can see that door is cooler than the surrounding area. And of course this door is quite thin. So it's warm inside and cold outside. All around the edges of the door, the hinges, the door lock, they're the coldest. And the floor is the warmest because of the radiant heat. So if we did this in the summertime, it would be cool inside and hot outside. We'd see the hot air coming in through the edges of the door. Look at my 3D printer. You can see the build plate. And the item being printed is heated by the build plate. And the top of the workbench that's being warmed by the radiated heat. Like a lot of things, the instruction book for this is somewhat lacking. After a bunch of trial and error, I was able to figure out how this works. This is the on and off button. If you press it down and hold it, it will wake up and come on. And if you press this down and hold it, it'll give you power off and it'll shut down. When this is powered up, you can plug your cable in here and put it into a USB port on your computer and the memory will show up as a hard drive. The menu button gives you a bunch of options. Come down to images. It'll show what pictures you have taken. I can set different ways that the infrared camera will work and what I have set right now is on spectra. It shows a wide spectrum of colors for the full range of the infrared heat signature. Emissivity gives you a bunch of choices like matte, semi-gloss, gloss, or if you know what the emissivity is for what you're taking a picture of, you can set this to where you need it. Currently it's set at 0.95. And in settings, you can adjust when it shuts off automatically, the light intensity, the language. I have it set for English. 
The uh, temperature units, I have it set for Fahrenheit. You can set the uh, time format, 24 hours or 12 hours. Uh, the time of day. Spot, I have it set right now for just a center spot. If I turn the spot on, then I'll get random temperature selections that will float around on the image. And this is the version of the camera. Image registration. If I hit select, I get these arrows. And the arrows indicate the direction that I'm going to shift the overlay of the infrared image on top of the visible light image. If I use the up and down buttons, the visible light image will shift up and down. The infrared image is stationary. Now if I use left or right, then I can shift the visible light image left or right. By doing that, if I'm taking an image that is partially visible light with the infrared overlaid, then I can shift those two to where one's just a little bit offset to the other. And that may or may not make it easier to identify what it is you're trying to show with the thermal image. The mini split unit out in my garage is running on heat cycle. The green area up on the roof where the heat's been rising after the unit was running, it turned off a few minutes ago, so now the roof's starting to cool off again. The way I'm switching back and forth, I push this and it switches to the fullest or the strongest infrared, which means that the visible light camera is turned off, and then I can switch back to visible light with this button. The operation between these two keys is the easiest. If I click the key once, so it'll ask if I want to save the picture. Click it again, it'll say yes, and it goes away. And the same thing if I'm in, in infrared. If I take that, it says yes. If I do not want to take it, and I hit select over here, it goes to no, and the option to save goes away. A hot cup of coffee. Where that cup of coffee had been sitting, a cold can of beer. If somebody swipes your can of beer or you've misplaced it, you can see where it was a few minutes ago. This camera is very useful. You can go around your house and look at your wall outlets, switch plates, your doors, your windows. If you have can lights in your ceiling, can lights in the ceiling are well known to leak hot and cold air up into the attic. You can look at units that are operating. If something's getting hot that shouldn't, something that should be getting hot that isn't, you can easily tell it with a thermal imaging camera. And the quality of this camera, while the image that it's recording is a little bit on the small side, it is plenty big as a recorded record of what you're looking at. And there is an HT19 that records a larger image. This is really a good value in terms of the quality of the image that is displayed and recorded. So I believe this unit is about $400. Two or three years ago, a thermal imaging camera that was nowhere near this quality cost around $2,500 to $3,000. So this is really a very useful and bargain price instrument. You can see the displacers are hot and these silicone tubes leading to each cylinder and the cylinders have been heating up.